tonight we're beginning a new series. It's called Life Mastery. And Dr. Trim is going to be coming and she's going to be breaking down the word in a way like you've never heard it before. In fact, would you stand to your feet with me right now? I want you to welcome global influencer, empowerment specialist, Dr. Cindy Trim. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you are excited to be here tonight? Your life is about to change permanently. God is going to take your success and he's going to put it on overdrive. You're going to quantum leap in a lot of places that you were stuck and your next year is going to look nothing like this year. God has given me a message. I believe that right now, we are in a spiritual womb and what you've been sensing and feeling, I've been feeling the same thing, the levels, levels of frustration and it's not coming from a demonic source, it's not coming from a satanic source. It is actually a prophetic prompting and an indication that God is birthing you into the next. And this is not the time to fight it, this is a time to cooperate with the um, activities and the processes of the Holy Spirit. And many of you could never imagine what God has placed on the inside of you had it not been for a problem or pain or crisis that pointed towards purpose. And what you were going through right now has a lot to do with what you're going through. And heaven has identified the next and you are amongst the next. You can say amen. That's a good place to say amen. And, 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 and over the next couple of weeks, you're going to have an opportunity to be able to activate the word of the Lord that is going to be released in this place. It's going to be a corporate word, but it's going to be received individually. And if you are here tonight and if you are listening from around the world, God is speaking to you. Something is about to happen in the world. We are shifting into a new, the fourth industrial revolution. And God is raising up the next corporate leader, the next uh, political leader, the next um, technological leaders, the next scientific leaders, the next world leaders are being raised up. But they're not only going to be raised up secularly, but the church is going to rise up and you're going to see the spotlight of heaven, hallelujah, being shined upon those that have been adequately prepared to bring solutions to world problems. You you are a solution to world problems. You are a solution to your family problem. You are the solution the world has been praying for, looking for, hoping for, dreaming for, waiting for. It's time for you to rise, shine, for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You are the next in line and only those that are, 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 are posturing themselves and pressing their ear to the mouth of God and, 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 and beginning to, to navigate the realm of the spirit through prayer and even through, through praise and through worship and who are coming with a spirit of anticipation and ex expectation will begin to feel the prompting of the Lord and begin to cooperate with what God is doing in this world. You are not denied. I don't know who you are here. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know that there are people here in our life group and there are people around the world that is listening to my voice that God has prepared you you've been sensing it you've been feeling it and today I want to confirm that it's time for you to go to the next level it's time for you to go to the next level professionally. It's time for you to go to the next level spiritually. It's time for you to go to the next level socially. God is uh, uh, releasing an anointing of influence upon your life. You are the influencers. You are the movers, the shakers, the history makers. You are the line crossers. You are the destiny alterers. The anointing of God is upon you. You are not waiting on God. God is waiting 
waiting on you and all you have to do is say here am I Lord use me is there anybody listening under the sound of the auspices of the Holy Spirit that can raise their hands and say you are talking about me I command the Spirit of the Lord to come upon you I release a new mental of leadership upon you I decree and declare that the spirit of weariness is lifted from off of you. The spirit of frustration is lifted off of you. You are not going to throw the towel in. You are not going to abort your purpose. You are not going to sabotage what God has for you to next, for next. You are being delivered and you are being delivered right now. The spirit of the Lord is coming upon you and the anointing is breaking every yoke command yokes to be broken right now. I decree yokes are broken from off of your mind. Yokes are broken from off of your spirit. Yokes are broken from off of your emotion. I command every yoke to be broken now. Every yoke to be broken now. Every yoke to be broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do you to receive it. You're too conservative for me right now. You're too conservative for me right now. You're too conservative for me right now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. He's present. He wants to anoint you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to give you a breakthrough. I wish I had someone in here to give the Lord a real yes. To God. Glory to God. Glory to God. If I can get some more sound, whether it's uh, uh, the monitors or whether it's house sound, but something is about to happen. You are going to receive a word and that word is going to change your life. If I were you, every word that is released by the Holy Spirit tonight, I would pull it down for myself. I would own it. I would not pay attention to the person on my left or on my right. And, and as to whether or not I go for what is mine, I decree and declare you are now moving into the realm of the Spirit with reckless abandon nothing is going to hinder you you are not even going to hinder yourself thank you Jesus thank you Jesus glory to God you're too conservative for me you're too conservative you're not waiting on me for the next. You're waiting on the Holy Spirit. And he's moving. He's moving from breast to breast. He's moving from chair to chair. He's moving from aisle to aisle. He's moving from seat to seat. Who am I talking to? If I'm talking to you, do it to you. Shout me. It's me. It's me. Yes. Yes. Grab the person's hand beside you. Let's just pray for a few minutes. Glory to God. Glory to God. The hand that you are holding is the hand of someone very important in the kingdom. Squeeze that hand. You're holding the hand of someone that is anointed, someone that is powerful. You're holding the hand of a leader. You're holding a hand of an anointed individual. You're holding the hand of God's representative. You're holding the hand of the neck. Squeeze that hand. But don't that's just, just squeeze the hand. Somebody is squeezing your hand. Glory to God, you're the next, you're the next, you're the next, you're the next. And tonight, something supernatural is going to happen to you. And when it happens, if you have to run, run. If you have to scream, scream. And just because you, the person on your left and right didn't get the revelation of what God is doing in your life, it doesn't mean you have to act as if you did not get the revelation. There is going to be a special delivery tonight. Oh, yes. I see one person. I see one person being anointed. I see another person receiving. I see another person over here receiving. I see a person in my front. Something is about to happen. Reach up and 
and grab it. Reach up and grab it. Pull it down. Shout it. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Take your spirit out of neutral. Turn to your name and say, your spirit's in neutral. You're just going through the motion, I can tell. I can tell you're just going through the motion. Because you were, if you had really pressed into God, your praise would have still been going on. Your hands still would have been clapping. Your feet still would have been moving. We would have had to pull you out of that zone. Yes. Hallelujah. Tonight is a destiny-altering moment for all of us. Not just for you, for me. And we're all stepping into the new, and we're going to do it in a synchronized fashion. In the realm of the spirit, we are all stepping into the new. The frustration that you have been feeling is not your emotions. It's the prompting of the spirit. You're in a prophetic moment in the realm of the spirit. Oh, Lord have mercy. Glory to God. Somebody praise God with him. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. If the person on your right is praising the Lord, magnify the Lord with that person. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why my mic is going in and out, but if you can uh, fix that for me, I'd appreciate it. Amen. Hold a person's hand, say I'm anointed right now. Something's about to happen to your role. Turn the person on your left and right and tell them if you're an imposter, you might as well move your seat. Because something is about to go down in this room. If you didn't come for a breakthrough, you're in the wrong row. If you didn't come for to be anointed, you're in the wrong row. If you didn't come to change, you're in the wrong row. If you didn't come to be elevated, you're in the wrong row. If you didn't come to be delivered, you're in the wrong row. You might as well move now because something is about to happen. Glory to God. My cup is running over. That means the person on your left and right has to be in the overflow. Turn to the person on your left and right, point to them and shout overflow. 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 Oh. Yeah. Glory to God. Do it one more time and when they shout, Glory to God. Glory to God. Hold one another's hand one more time. Our Father God, we give you praise just for the moments that we would spend excavating your word. We pray that you would give us articulation of speech. Holy Spirit, be in the midst of us. 
Let us take copious notes. Let us be fully engaged in this moment of teaching. Instruct us. Give us revelation that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Show us the way. Open up your word. Your word is life. Your word is light. We are hungering and thirsting after it. So fill us. We want our lives to reflect every promise that you have made in this word. You promised to make us the head and not the tail. To cause us to rise above every nation that we would lend to many nations and not borrow. You promised that there will be no sickness and diseases that will be placed upon us. Father, you promised to save our family. You promised to lead our children in the way that they should go if we would teach them. You made so many promises to us. And as we excavate the word of God, we know that the word preached is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. You're able to send your word and heal us. The word that is sent is going to perform in the thing whereto it is sent, and it will not return unto you void. Work in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Encourage, motivate, inspire, uplift, elevate. Drag us out of the prison of depression and suicide. Let us not give up. Encourage those that are on their last thread, hanging on for their lives. Heal those that are wounded and bruised and sick and diseased. Elevate, nurture, comfort. You are our Heavenly Father. And we know you will supply all of our need according to your riches and glory. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hug the person on your left and right and announce to them, this is the last time you're going to see my life in this state. The last time. When I walk out of here, you're not even going to be able to address me like you addressed me when I came in. Everything about me is about to be changed for the best. We are fully recording this and so I'm going to ask those of you that have the tendency to use your cell phone to record, not to do it. You are disconnected from what God is doing. And you will miss a divine visitation. There's a potential you will miss a divine visitation. We will be teaching. And I want to encourage those of you that um, love to take notes. I'm going to encourage you to do something that is kind of like old-fashioned and get you some uh, notebooks and some lesson books that are just like 69 cents at Walmart. And you get those old fashioned com composition books and bring them, bring your pen, your notepad. You can use your phone as a Bible, your iPad as a Bible. You could bring one of the old fashioned Bibles. But I want you to become a student of the word. And I don't want you to lose, ever lose that. Because when you go home, I want you to review before you go to bed. Review your notes. And then one of the principles, at least one of the principles, apply immediately or the next day. Whatever is most appropriate. I'm excited to be able to do life with you, especially during this season of my life where I'm stepping forward now as a mother in Zion and connecting with my sons and daughters and those that carry my DNA to be able to spend the rest of my life pouring into you for success. And you're going to see the importance of this particular message. I'm very, very excited, very humbled that God would give me the responsibility as well as the privilege to be able to teach you in this way. This is going to be a destiny-defining series. And you're going to want to meditate on this word all day, all night, when you have the opportunity to study. I'm going to ask you to become a student that passed the test. And this 
I preached a lot of messages that changed my life, revolutionized my life way before I preached it. And this is one of those messages. And I didn't have enough time over the last couple of months sitting and preparing this message. Last night, I saw uh, the morning come. I was still sitting. And straight in the back, I was still sitting as the Holy Spirit was pouring into my spirit. And I said to my husband, I wished the day that I got saved, this was one of the first messages that I heard, how different my life would have been if I had this level of wisdom. Whenever God gets ready to shift a season in your life, he always introduces you to another relationship. And whenever there's a shift in that relationship, there's always a shift in a season in one or both of your lives. And I think we miss seasonal shifts because we become over familiar with one another. And we see it happening in marriages where, you know, you have times and occasions where you're away from your spouse. And we don't realize that our, our spouse has changed and it's not the same woman or the same man that left the house. When they come back, they're a different person. And you have your lifetime growing together and a lifetime to begin to get to know that person. And we're always changing. And if you have people in your life that treat you like they treated you last year and address you as if they really know everything about you, that's not a person that you necessarily want to invite on a spiritual journey because they would create a spiritual drag where you'll feel a pull, you're moving forward and you wonder why you feel a resistance in the realm of the spirit. And a lot of times it may not be a satanic resistance, it might be human resistance. Why? Because the human spirit is more powerful than a demonic force, more powerful. There's no demonic force that has authority in the earth realm, only human beings. And you are more powerful than you can ever imagine. And sometimes when we, we are believing that we're fighting demonic forces, it may be the human spirit, someone who doesn't want you to change, someone who is jealous of you, someone who wants to manipulate you, someone who recognizes your giftedness and your talentness, talents and your relevance and your influence, and they're hoping that you don't see it. And there's all kinds of resistance. And if a person resists you long enough and you don't change, it turns into resentment. And this is why in relationships, people secretly harbor resentment, not knowing that it started with resistance. You've got to give God permission to move in your life and move in other people's life and move people out of your life. And the movement might just be for a season. Sometimes you've got to move on. And moving on doesn't mean that you disconnect in terms of a relationship. It doesn't mean that you have to divorce. It means that you have to give that person over to God and be obedient to what God is speaking to you and do it anyhow, be it anyhow, go anyhow. Obedience is a lonely place. And your path when you mature becomes straight and narrow. With everything that is in you, protect your personal relationship with God and tell everybody around you, I love you, but this part of my life is off limits to you. You don't get to weigh in. And this is how I live my life. Nobody gets to weigh in on what God is speaking to me. He doesn't have to speak through you in order to speak to me when I have a personal relationship and I talk to him and he talks to me all day long. And we spend more time listening to people than listening to the Holy Spirit and listening to God. 
We spend more time on other people's timeline at the expense of God's timeline for us. And we miss divine timetables. But this is the last season that that would happen to you. And you're going to be obedient to what the Father is speaking in your spirit. And you would never come to a place where you're over familiar with the gifts that God places in your life. Whether it's a gift of friendship or a gift of a spouse or a gift of a mentor or a pastor or a coach. You will never ever allow the enemy to seduce you into a place of over familiarity where all you see is the person, the natural person. You don't see the spiritual part of that person and you don't celebrate and you don't contribute to their growth and development and success and prosperity, even if it means I'm praying for you, even if it means I'm giving you an encouraging word, even if it means you hold them accountable for their action. Let me tell you something, if a person allows you to sabotage your life and they stand by for fear you may misunderstand their challenge of you they do not love you they don't love you nobody is going to allow someone that they love fall over a cliff you cannot manipulate them and make them do anything but at least you could say there's a cliff over there be careful here is what your vision is, and I'm holding you accountable because right now you're off vision. Here is what you told me you are, but right now you're off brand. Those are the types of people that we need in our lives, not those that criticize us. Anybody could criticize, but someone to get to know you and to would sit with you long enough to try to figure out, okay, this is what God is doing. And I want to be the one to hold you accountable. Accountable for your greatness. You're pitching in a realm of mediocrity. You're thinking in a realm of the clutter of the common folk. You're thinking ordinary. You've got extraordinary gift, an extraordinary mind. But how your thinking is ordinary. We need those kinds of people in our lives that raise the standard and raise the bar and not only tells you, but lives what they preach. Those are the types of people. You don't need people who are using your life like a laboratory, giving you suggestions and opinions that they have never applied in their own life. You're going to get the bad end of the stick, the raw part of the deal. But this is a season that God is going to quantum leap the church. Your life is going to be quantum leap. Are you prepared for the greatness that is coming in the next decade? Amazing opportunities. And God is going to press you and put the pressure on you. People that know who you are don't need you to explain who you are. They're not going to judge you when a person sees you in the future. What you do in your present is not going to influence their perception. Especially when they know you don't have someone to mentor you. Someone that you're submitted to. We are disconnected because we don't trust any longer. And we, we have a, a culture of non-trust and suspicion. And so what God is going to do, he's going to bring trusting mentors and fathers and mothers. And he's going to bring individuals that have the assignment to be your midwife. It's going to help you to push to the next level. Tonight, I'm humbled. I want to go to my text from out of John chapter 10, verse 10. This is going to be a series. Tonight, I will not finish this series. I'm going to introduce you to the series. And I want you to journey with me for the length of this series. 
The series is called Life Mastery. Life Mastery. You're a masterpiece. That means you're the piece, you're a piece of the master. And if you're a piece of the master, you should have mastery over what he gave you. John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Today I want to talk to you about life. And life has many metaphors. And some say life is a game. You've got to play your cards right in order to win. They say life is a journey. Be careful who you choose as your traveling companions and make certain that you keep your Wi-Fi connected to heaven and your GPS on. Life is a voyage. We talk about marriage being on the rocks and we refer to hard times and challenges as storms in life. If you are journeying through life and it's a voyage, you are some days going to be on the rocks. Your business may be on the rocks. Your marriage may be on the rock. And you will have to deal with the storms in life. There's another metaphor that says life is a train. And you've got to stay on the right tracks. Life is like an elevator. It's filled with ups and downs. It's a play. When something goes wrong, all you need to do is shout out plot twist. Life is a path. We all find and follow our own divine unique path. Life is a flute. It has many holes, but if you learn to play it right, it will be filled with the most beautiful melodies. Life is like a washing machine. It twists us, it spins us, it knocks us around, but in the end, we come out cleaner, brighter, and better than before. But the Apostle Paul, amongst all the myriads of, of metaphors that he sprinkles throughout the epistles, he pens to us. He many times uses metaphors about life. He sees life metaphorically as a battle you have to fight and a race you have to run. But for the intent of this message, I pulled out one of the metaphors that he uses and he said, life is a school. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 4, 15. 1 Corinthians 4, 15. And if you're writing, I want you to take copious notes because I'm going to unpack some amazing things that are going to help you to live an amazing life. 1 Corinthians 4.15, if you have found it, shout, I found it. The Bible said, and if you would read with me, 1 Corinthians 4.15, read out loud. And if your neighbor doesn't have a Bible, didn't bring the Bible to your life group, share your Bible with the person sitting next to you. Let's read, read out loud, and read so that your neighbor is blessed. Don't mumble it. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The Bible said, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ... You have not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. And I love his metaphor. He said, you have 10,000 instructors in Christ. And so today I want to begin our series with our first lesson, and that is the entitlement, A School Called Life. A School Called Life. In this school called life, you have many instructors. Paul said that you have 10,000s of instructors. That word instructor is a Greek word which you have probably heard in English, pedagogos, out of which you get pedagogy, which has to do with teaching. It means that someone that is assigned to bring maturity, usually intellectual maturity, but amongst the Greeks and amongst the Romans, the name was applied to a trustworthy individual who was assigned and charged with the duty of supervising the life and the morals of boys belonging to the upper class and a royal family. You belong not only to an upper class, you belong to a God class. 
and you belong to a royal family. We are royal priesthood. Your father is the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. That makes you a part of a royal lineage. And if they could do it for the natural, also God is going to ensure that he gives you instructors or pedagogues or pedagogies for the spiritual. And he's not going to leave you without instructors and without teachers. These boys were not allowed so much as to step outside of the house without them before arriving at the age of manhood. That means that whenever they stepped outside of the house, the instructor went, the pedagogy went with them. We are all children of God. We are sons of God. And God will not let you step outside of your house to go out in life without your instructors going with you. We have identified your spiritual fathers, but who are your pedagogies? Who are the ones that are assigned to instruct you? If you would turn with me to John 3, 1 to 6, you will discover that this is not just the concept presented to us by Paul. During Jesus' life, the concept of an instructor we see highlighted in the book of John 3, 1 to 6 where Nicodemus identified that Jesus was his, was his instructor, his pedagogy, his teacher, and he wanted to submit to him as a student. That's where you get the word disciple. The word disciple means someone that is being disciplined by a pedagogy, someone that is being disciplined by an instructor. In the book of John, chapter 3, 1 to 6, if you would turn there with me, the Bible said there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. His name was Nicodemus. He was traveling at night long before this generation had Nick at night. This was Nick at night. The Bible said the same came to Jesus by night and said, listen to this word, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He didn't recognize him as an apostle or a prophet. He said, we recognize you as a rabbi, as a teacher, that you are come from God. For no man can do these miracles that do, thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus posed another question. He said, how can a man be born again when he is old? We talk about, I studied at uh, Oxford University. I've studied at Harvard University. And what they use is the Socratic method. We talk about Socrates. Socrates was about helping the student to raise questions so that they can discover the answers in life. There was one philosopher that said, we know the answer, but what is the question? Questions are very important. The questions we ask are precursors to the path we travel. If you are traveling on the wrong path, it may mean that you've asked the wrong person the wrong direction. Nicodemus addressed Jesus as rabbi. It was recognizing him as a teacher he wanted to submit to. Life is a schoolroom filled with teachers and instructors. You've got to position yourself as a lifelong learner and a student. And you've got to do it for the rest of your life. You've got to be able to find those that are spiritual luminaries and submit to their teaching. You've got to be attentively tuned to their lessons. And if you are attentively tuned and intentionally tuned to your pedagogy, eventually you are going to graduate. The question is, what degree will you hold? One of the things I found out is this, that there are so many people that have dropped out of the school of life and put their life on autopilot. But I decree and declare you are going to take your thought, your spirit, your mind, your life from off of autopilot. You are going to shift yourself from out of gear into gear and into overdrive. 
What I want you to do is to promise God you will not be a drop out. Turn to the person on your left and your right and say, I have a prophetic word for you. Don't be a drop out. There are so many people that are dropping out of life. I decree and declare you will no longer drop out. You're going to drop in and you're going to stay in. God will not allow you to step out into life without being accompanied by your pedagogy. We have identified our spiritual fathers and mothers, but who is your instructor? We talk about life lessons, but who are the instructors? If life is a school, that means we are constantly being tutored. In the book of Galatians chapter 4 verses 1 to 7, if you would go there with me please. The Bible says, now I say that the heir as long as he is a child differeth nothing from a servant though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors. A tutor is responsible for your intellectual development and for critical thinking. Your governors are responsible for moral development. Who in your life is holding your feet over the fire and demanding from you to raise the bar on your intellect and your moral character? Who have you opened yourself to so that they can help you to judge according to the biblical standard and not according to the world each one of our life lessons are going to differ and the curriculum that God selects for you may vary from person to person but our curricula are meant to get all of us in the same destination and that is the full expression of God's original plan and purpose for your life when you look at your life, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, when you look at your life and when you look at your vision and when you look at your dreams and when you look at your goals, are you where you thought you would be this time last year? Are you fulfilling your life mission? Do you know what your life mission is? Do you have a life mission statement? Do you have your vision? Is it in fact your vision and not a copy of someone else's vision? Are you happy with where you are in your life? Do you wake up every morning to the spouse of your dream? Are you maximizing your potential? Are you fulfilling your purpose? Have you accomplished the goals that you established for this year? Do you have all your finances, all the finances that you need to underwrite your vision? What is your vision? Do you have a vision and do you have the finances to send your children to the best of schools? Do you have the finances to live in the best of neighborhood? And if your answer is no, this message is for you. I want you to write this down. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Paul said you have many instructors, but are you learning your lesson? So many people drop out of school and they should be dropping in. I decree and declare this is the last day you're going to be on an extended recess. This is the last day you're going to have to go to after school detention. I decree and declare you're in an accelerated program. I decree and declare that the curriculum that God has written you will prompt you to prophetically say I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. Paul said you have 10,000 instructors but tonight I want to talk to you about the 22 life instructors hallelujah that God has given all of us. I call them the ultimate teacher. If you don't know who your teachers are you can miss your lesson and when you look at your life brothers and sisters and your goals my question again are you happy with what you have accomplished thus far in your life and how far you have progressed or do you say I should have been and could have been
been a lot further if only I knew and had this lesson before. I've got good news for each one of you. All is not lost. That you are going to go back to school because it's never too late for you to go back to school. And so I want to introduce you to your first instructor. Your first instructor of the 22 instructor is the instructor named Wisdom. In the book of Mark 6, 1 to 4, if you would go there with me, please. The Bible said, and he went out from thence and came into his own country. And his disciples or his students followed him. And when the, st- when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which he is given unto? unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand. And so Jesus uh, carried with him a powerful instructor. And that instructor is the instructor called wisdom. Psalm 90 verse 12, if you are writing your notes, the prayer of David is a simple prayer. So teach us to number our days that we are applying our hearts to wisdom. Psalm 105 verse 17 to 22 speaks of Joseph in this way, that he sent a man before him, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came and the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him. Even the ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of his substance to bind the princes of pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. He was not only there changing the economic trajectory of a, of, of a new emerging uh, a, a country, but he was there also to instruct the political uh, 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 um, uh, fraternity with the wisdom from heaven. And what God is going to do, he's going to pour so much wisdom in you that when you go out in your profession and in your field, you are going to rise to the top because of your wisdom. Wisdom wisdom is the principal thing according to Proverbs 4 and 7. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. Never walk out of your house without wisdom. Never engage in a deal without wisdom. Never engage in a relationship without wisdom. Wisdom is a game changer. The Bible said in Exodus 31, 1, to three. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, see, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of her of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and an understanding and in a knowledge and all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and silver and brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving up timber to work in all manner of workmanship. And I don't want you to miss it. His wisdom was not just connected to architect. It was not just connected to carpentry. It was not just connected to metallurgic whatever that word is, working in metals. It was not just connected to the fact that he was building the tabernacle. It was connected to the fact that it came from a specific tribe and it was a tribe of Judah and from out of the tribe of Judah, Judah was not just about praise. Judah was about dominion and was about rulership. This is where the kingly anointing stemmed from. It came from out of the tribe of Judah, why would God have to select someone out of governance, out of the Senate? Why would he have to select somebody that had a brilliant mind, hallelujah, that they had political prowess, that they were the best and the brightest? Why didn't he just go into the church and ask the uh, uh, Levites from the tribe of Levite to build the tabernacle? It is because when 
it comes to the kingdom, God is identifying the best and the brightest, those that have had their intellect, hallelujah, matured and in the intellect refined and their spiritual, the, the spiritual refinement so that they can understand the protocols that operate in leadership. The anointing of Bezalel is an amazing anointing and in the next decade God is going to cause to arise from out of the body of Christ uh, those that have the mental, not just the anointing but the mental of Bezalel. It means that God is going to have you operating from a place of wisdom. Wisdom is gained from experience. That means that many of you God is going to uh, 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 quantum leap what he's doing in your life and you're going to find out that you're going to go from one test to another test from one trial to another trial and it's going to be back to back and he's going to test your spirit and he's going to test your ability to be able to navigate some of the most difficult relationships he's going to try you he's going to test you for intentions he's going to test you for motivation he's going to test you for loyalty he's going to look at you and he's going to test you to see how much pressure you can take as a follower it's not that you have to follow for the rest of your life but can you take the pressure because if you cannot keep up with the footman there's no way you're going to be able to run with the horseman and so your life is going to be laid bare and when you look at others he's going to put such a demand on you and he's going to be jealous of you and others can but you will not he's going to be able he's going to be jealous of you and you may not understand why the pressure would be on you and you would look around and other people People will be sailing through life but God will not allow you to get away with anything because he's preparing you to rise to the top and heavy is the head that wears the crown is easy when you're a spectator when you're looking at the strong man and you watch the strong man fall and you laugh because his face is marred with mud but you are still a spectator you have not participated yet in life and those of you that are under the auspices of my voice right now I believe that the pressure is on you because God is addressing you not for to maintain where you are but where you are going and when God chooses you he's going to choose you because of the excellence of your spirit because of the refinement of your gift this is a season where God is going to bring instruction in your life and demand that you maximize your potential you refine your gift and you allow the Holy Spirit to refine your character that who you are in the public is the same person you are in privacy the world has a leadership gap and what better place to look for leadership than the church the church has access not only to experience and not only to knowledge but we have access to divine wisdom wisdom that passes human understanding and when God gives you wisdom, a degree is not necessary. You do not have to be intimidated when God gets through with you to be overly concerned that you do not have a degree and other people around you have a master's, a PhD, have an MA, have an MPA. You don't have to be intimidated. The wealthiest and most influential people People in this world have no degree but what they have is wisdom and they, they will have a wisdom for something that does not exist and God is taking you through wisdom into another realm and it's a realm of innovation I decree and declare that wherever you are serving God whether it's in the sacred house or whether it is the in a secular position I decree you 
you will not leave home without this instructor wisdom the Bible said that if any man lacks wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid if not and it shall be given unto him in the book of 2nd Chronicles chapter 1 verse 9 to 12 if they were, you would go there with me please the Bible said now O Lord God let the promise unto David my father be established for thou has made him king over a people like the dust of the earth is multiplied I decree and declare that as God elevates you and places you in a position of influence and gives you dominion within your sphere of influence within your profession within your industry and within your field I decree and declare that God is going to give you celebrity status and not only celebrity status the people that you influence will be like the dust of the earth in multitude I decree that wisdom as you embrace wisdom wisdom is going to give you the strategy and the character and the ability and the integrity and the morality and the ethics that will increase your influence I decree and declare the beginning of the next decade and the beginning of the next year I decree and declare it is going to be a year of wisdom that God will download the wisdom and not only the wisdom the wisdom through strategy and the wisdom through tactics so that you can quantum leap and I decree and declare over all of us within the next four years you are going to be considered the number one if not amongst the best and the brightest within your industry I decree it I declare it I legislate it I prophesy it and it cannot be otherwise. And the Bible said that hallelujah, uh, 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 Solomon prayed, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before the people for who can judge this people that is so great. I decree and declare your, 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 your days of living in the realm of mediocrity is over. I decree you are moving into a new realm of greatness. I decree decree that God is going to give you great influence, a great name. He's going to give you great friends. I decree that when people see you, they're going to see you as a great man and a great woman. They're going to see you as a great leader and a great doctor and a great lawyer and a great architect. You are going to be one of the greatest influencers in your generation in Jesus name. And he, God gave him, not only gave him the wisdom that he acts but gave him an understanding of the spiritual protocol one of the things that wisdom will give to you is an understanding of spiritual protocol spiritual protocol is not just what you do in church but spiritual protocol is necessary for you to understand the right code of conduct to navigate whatever realm God places you in and I decree and declare you are not just going to another level. You are going to another dimension of understanding of the importance of wisdom. And wisdom is going to elevate you into a, another realm of power. I decree it and it is so. Clap your hands. Shout I receive it. Do something with your mouth. Amen. Just because the person beside you is quiet, it doesn't mean that you should be quiet with it. One of the things that I want you to be cautious of, never underestimate the power of your first instructor called wisdom. Wisdom can change every aspect of your life. Proverbs 19 and 8 says, he who gets wisdom loves his own soul. That means as long as you stay ignorant, you don't love yourself. But if you love yourself, you will get wisdom. The proof of self-love is always self-mastery. And a part of wisdom is to give you self-mastery, mastery over yourself. Job 28, 19 says, The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. Ecclesiastes 9 and 6 says, So I said, wisdom is better 
greater than strength. Ecclesiastes 9.18 says, Wisdom is better than the weapons of warfare. Seek the wisdom of God. And when you seek the wisdom of God, and you say to wisdom, Thou art my instructor. Thou art my pedagogy. You will begin to see a change in all of your life affairs. You will see a difference in your relationship. You will see a difference in your finances. You would see a difference in your work uh, uh, performance. You would see a social difference. You would see a difference in your health. You would see a difference in your mental health. Wherever wisdom shows up, wisdom is going to bring with it benefits. One of the benefits that wisdom gives you, wisdom gives you global influence. The Bible said Ecclesiastes 719, wisdom strengthens a wise man more than 10 rulers who are in a city. I decree and declare your brand is so strong. Your brand is stronger than the 10 strongest brands in Atlanta, than the 10 strongest brands in London, than the 10 strong, the strongest brands in South Africa, the 10 strongest brands in Nigeria, the 10 strongest brands in Bermuda, the 10 strongest brands in Jamaica. I decree and declare that wisdom is going to increase your brand equity. Not only will it increase your brand equity, and I feel, hallelujah, that I should stay right here. I decree the value that the, you bring to the table is now proceed by people that have the power and the influence to change your financial trajectory, your spiritual trajectory. I decree you are rising out of obscurity and people that overlooked you last season, they are not going to be able to overlook you this season. They are looking for the next and I decree and declare you are raising your hand and you are shouting with every prophetic unction that you have in you. I am the next. I'm the next influencer. I'm the next great leader. I'm the next great doctor. I'm the next. I'm the one that you are looking for. Wisdom. Wisdom activates God's life extension program and gives you long life and good health. Proverbs 9, 10, 11 sit. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me the, thy, thy days shall be more multiplied and thy years of thy life shall be increased. Wisdom is God's life extension program. I decree and declare as you embrace wisdom as your instructor, I decree you will not die prematurely. You will live the length of your days with life. I decree you have dynamic health. I decree you will not suffer from mental diseases and disorders. Order, I decree you will be sustained and protected from Alzheimer's degree, de, uh, de, uh, Alzheimer's uh, uh, disease. I decree and declare you will not suffer from emotional diseases. I decree you will not have to take pills for anxiety, bipolar disorder. And those of you that are on pills, I decree and declare that God is giving you the wisdom to reverse the disease. I decree decree you will have the wisdom to re reverse high blood pressure. You will have the wisdom to reverse diabetes. You will have the wisdom and where your doctor's expertise and wisdom is going to begin. You will have wisdom as your instructor. Wisdom is going to go to the boardroom with you. Wisdom is going to go to the bank with you. Wisdom is going to be in college with you. Wisdom is going to go with your children to school. I decree because of the wisdom your children operate under the mantle of Daniel. I decree your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren are ten times smarter than their contemporary. I decree and declare they are excelling. They are light years ahead. They have understanding. They have a wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom gives you protection because wisdom is a defense. Ecclesiastes 7 and 
and 12 says, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Shout, I have it. I have it. Wisdom. Wisdom will give you strength. The Bible said in Job 13, 13 to 16, with him is wisdom and strength. He has counsel and understanding. Behold, he breaketh down and it cannot be built again. He shutteth up a man and there can be no opening. Behold, he withholdeth the waters and they dry up. Also, he sendeth them out and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. Wisdom, I decree and declare this is the strongest you have ever been. I decree with wisdom you have mental fortitude. With wisdom you have spiritual fortitude. With wisdom you are not subject to your emotions. God has not given you the spirit of fear but power of love and soundness of mind. I decree your season of being wishy-washy is over. You are steadfast, immovable, always abound in the work of the Lord I decree and declare your instructor wisdom is teaching you how to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might wisdom wisdom brings you into the realm of dominion leadership and global influence hallelujah Proverbs 8 14 to 16 if you would turn there with me please wisdom wisdom says counsel is mine sound wisdom I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree a justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Your days of living as the tale is over. Your days of living last and always behind and always a day late and a dollar short. Those days are over. Wisdom is going to take you from the back and bring you to the front. Wisdom is going to take you from from the bottom and it's going to cause you to rise to the top and listen to me carefully when you have wisdom you don't have to kiss the darkest side of someone's anatomy this is the last day that you're going to kiss up this is the last day you're going to have to give everything and nobody gives anything back to you I decree and declare you are taking wisdom wherever you go because wisdom is going to bring you into the realm of dominion in the realm of leadership and the realm of global influence. I speak to gates and doors. Lift up your head, O oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. That king is my shepherd, and where he leads me, I'm following, and he's going through these doors and gates, and so shall I. This is the last season that doors will be closed in your face, and gates will be clothes in your face. I decree this is a season where you have favor with doorkeepers and gatekeepers. They may close the door in other people's faith. And I decree and declare God sets before you an open door. Walk through it. I decree and declare that wisdom, you will embrace wisdom as your pedagogy. You will embrace wisdom as your instructor and as your teacher. Can I give you just a little bit more? Wisdom. Wisdom will give you the ability to excel in life. Wisdom is always the precursor to excellence. If you would turn to the book of Daniel chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 the Bible says then was Daniel brought in before the king and the king spake and said unto Daniel art thou Daniel in other words he knew the name Daniel but never met him before I decree and declare your name is going to go before you people are going to say I heard about you and I always wanted to meet you I decree and declare your name alone is being spoken into people's ear. People are tracking you in the realm of the spirit and they know who you are. I decree the anointing of Daniel is going to come upon you. The Bible said, art thou Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, born out of Jewry. I have even heard of thee at that the spirit 
spirit of God is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. I decree and declare you will not only be known as a woman and a man of excellence. I decree and declare you will be known as a man and a woman of excellent wisdom. My God. That's taking wisdom and putting it on steroids. I decree it. I speak it into your spirit. You are a man. You are a woman of excellent wisdom. Shall I receive it? Turn with me to 1 Kings 4, 29 to 30. Hallelujah. You're getting something out of this. 1 King, this is, only, this is only your first instructor. This is only your first teacher. We've got 20 more teachers, 21 more teachers to teach you about. 1 Kings 4, 29 and 30. The Bible said, And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. I decree and declare that your wisdom is, 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 is not only like the sand on the seashore. You have so much wisdom wisdom that when you open your mouth the wisdom falls out and comes out of your mouth like the Niagara Falls. I decree everything that comes out of your mouth is so powerful that even the wisest people put their finger to their mouth and tell themselves to be quiet. I decree you have that level of wisdom and Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. I decree and declare that your wisdom is excelling not only all the children or all your contemporaries in the United States of America, but I decree that if you are in Africa, your wisdom is excelling the wisdom of Europe, the wisdom of the United States of America. If you are in Brazil, I decree and declare you will no longer compare yourself with those that are in your country. You are excelling in wisdom than those people that are in in Dubai, if you were in Dubai, I decree and declare that whoever is wise in whatever country, I decree you are excelling them all. I decree you will no longer compare yourself with people that are in your industry. You are now being compared to the best and the brightest that are in the world. I decree and declare wherever you show up, it's going to be like the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games is only hallelujah your field with the best and the brightest around the world. I decree and declare your whole life is like an Olympic game. You are surrounded only by the best and the brightest. I decree your friends are changing. I decree and declare either they change or they will be changed and replaced by individuals that can take your life to the next level. Wisdom. Wisdom gives you creativity. The Bible said in Exodus 28 and 3 and thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted who I am filled who I have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they make they, that they may make Aaron's garment to consecrate him and that he may minister unto me in the priest's office in other words these were garments that had never been made before there was nothing in the world that could compare with this because there was no pattern this was a divine pattern you have seen some of the the, the top cars you have seen Lamborghinis you have seen Ferraris you have seen Bentleys but that's what you have seen the Bible said I have not seen ear has not heard neither has it entered into the heart hallelujah the things of man those that love him the things that have, he has prepared for them that love him if you love the Lord and the Lord fills you with wisdom God is going to give you innovative and creative ability so that you will not have to duplicate anything that that is that you will be a trendsetter and a mega trendsetter. I decree that wisdom is giving you creative creativity and innovative skill that when you sit down to write your book, there's going to be no book that they can compare your book with. When you preach your message, they will not be able to compare you with anybody else. You are going to be the first of its kind and the only of its kind 
kind. I decree and declare your products and your goods are going to be the only of its kind. Your messages are going to be so unique that people in a scholastic arena are going to take a second look. Did I hear right? Did I, did, did I hear what they say? I decree and declare that whenever you are moving in and out your spheres of influences, I decree and declare you have so much innovation and creativity that is just going to drop down, hallelujah, like raindrops. You're going to stand there and you're going to have a different perspective. You're going to have a fresh perspective on all problems, a fresh perspective in all issues. I decree and declare that you are a trailblazer, but you are also an individual that brings solutions to all problems. I decree and declare you are no longer a part of the problem. You are the solution. You don't just have the solution. You're the solution to the problem in the educational institution. You're the solution to the problem in the healthcare institution. You're the solution to the problem at UN level. You are the solution to the political problems. You are the solution. I decree and declare that you will embrace wisdom as your instructor. Let me go through this as quickly as I can. Wisdom gives you standout qualities within your industry. Exodus 41 1 to 6 wisdom would give you direction and vision Ecclesiastes 2 13 wisdom gives you prosperity first Chronicles 22 12 and 13 wisdom gives you riches and wealth second Chronicles 1 6 to 12 wisdom gives you commendation in Genesis 41 39 to 43 and I want to go there hallelujah Pharaoh and and Joseph is having a conversation. And in verse number 33, 39 of chapter number 41 of the book of Genesis, the Bible said, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house according unto the word. Shall all my people be ruled? Only in the throne will I be, will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and array him with vestures of fine linen and put gold chains about the neck and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow thy knees and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt I decree and declare great man and great princes and governors are going to give you hallelujah commendation get ready you're going to be invited to banquets where they are giving you certificates where they are recognizing the work that you are doing you are going to have so much influence and you are going to have so much success that the world leaders hallelujah are going to give you an award and I see for you April the work that you are doing is going to cause you to rise to the top and that you should not be afraid in the season to take the quantum leap God is with you your name has gone ahead of you people are talking about you in every arena they're talking about your ladylike they're talking about your protocol they're talking about your brilliance they're talking about your refinement from today onward heaven recognizes you as the kingdom's ambassador you are one of the best and the brightest that the kingdom has and every door is open to you. I hear the Lord say to begin to prophesy over your life. Ask what you will and it shall be done. Ask of me for, for nations of the earth and I will give you those nations, saith the Lord. I have opened these doors and you can feel free to walk through them. It is your assignment. You are hearing right. You are seeing right. Saith the Lord, I am going with you and I'm sending your instructors with you 
you and the first instructor that I will send with you, say the Lord, is wisdom. And even as wisdom brought uh, Joseph out of the prison and wisdom brought David from out of obscurity and wisdom brought a little girl, adopted girl from out of, uh, hallelujah, an orphanage mindset into a deliverance mindset, even as I brought an adopted man by the name of Moses, hallelujah, from out of his place of oppression, I will bring you out so that I can carry you in. You will be a light to the nation, the wisdom that I will give you you would say I didn't study this I am not qualified I qualified you before you were formed in your mother's womb and I anointed you for this I have I have try, I have invested much in you you have been faithful in little and I've tested you in little things and now I'm going to make you ruler over much I have connected you wisdom has gone ahead of you to announce your coming and all you have to do is say yes in this season I will give you the plan I will give you the blueprint and you will go down in history as one that changed the trajectory of many nations saith God hallelujah wisdom wisdom gives you dominion and establishes you as an industry expert I decree and declare you are an industry expert you are no longer going to be lazy you are no longer going to say this is good enough it it is never good enough until you excel everyone's expectation. I decree and declare you are blowing everyone's mind. You are blowing their mind with your performance. You are blowing their mind with your deportment. You are blowing their mind with your excellence, with your morality. You are blowing your, their mind with their ethics. They're going to begin to say to you, I've never thought that this kind of people was still here. I decree you are representing the next. I decree you will not doubt it any longer because God has given you an instructor and wisdom is going to teach you. Wisdom will give you understanding. Deuteronomy 4, 5 to 6, you say there are some things you don't understand and some things you don't understand because you didn't have the capacity, because you don't have the degree, but wisdom is going to increase your capacity and you're going to understand things that you were never skilled in. You're going to understand things that you never studied. All of a sudden, it's just going to make sense to you. Things that stump your contemporaries, things that stump your colleagues are not going to stump you. You are going to bring wisdom to the table. Wisdom gives you knowledge and counsel, and it will make you learn more than you can ever think was possible Exodus 18 19 hearken now unto my voice and I will give thee counsel and God shall be with thee be thou for the people of God would that thou may bring the cause to God Proverbs 1 and 5 says a wise man will hear and will increase in learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel I decree and declare your spiritual deafness you're being delivered you are not only understanding and hearing I decree what you hear and understand is being converted into wisdom wisdom gives you love the Bible said reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee rebuke a wise man and he would love thee the people that hate to be reproved are scorners but the people that say yes I rebuke I've been rebuke and I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to accept it. The Bible calls you a wise man. Wisdom. Wisdom gives you joy. Proverbs 23 24 to 25 The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad and she that bear thee shall rejoice. I decree and declare everybody around you is happy 
happy that you are born in their family happy that you, they call you mother happy to call you father happy to call you uncle happy to call you cousin happy to call you friend I decree and declare there are thousands of people and on the sideline wishing they could be associated with you but those people who are associated with you I decree and declare all of a sudden they are happy I decree they're sending you a card to say thank you they're sending you gift because they recognize your value wisdom increases your value wisdom gives you peace wisdom gives you honor wisdom gives you revelation 5 and 12 wisdom gives you confidence revelation 5 and 12 wisdom gives you glory Ephesians 1 and 17 wisdom gives you instructions Proverbs 1 1 to 5 wisdom gives you righteousness if you see an unrighteous person they're an ignorant person they have no wisdom but first corinthians 1 uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 30 but the bible said but of him are ye in christ who is of god is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption don't tell me you are a born again believer and you don't have a wisdom if you don't have wisdom you really are not submitted to the Lordship of Christ I decree and declare a new commitment and a new consecration is coming upon you you are consecrating yourself and you are now submitting yourself to the Lordship of Christ I know he's your Savior but is he your Lord I decree and declare you are seeking him with everything wisdom wisdom brings you to a place of humility the Bible said the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility wisdom gives you pleasantness do you still have a little more room am I over am I over teaching you do you have capacity can I give you a little bit more hallelujah wisdom gives you pleasantness wisdom makes you a pleasant person people are miserable everywhere you go these are not wise people but the people that have wisdom are the the most pleasant people wisdom wisdom gives you discretion and it gives you sound judgment the book of Proverbs 8 14 counsel is mine and sound wisdom I am understanding and I have strength wisdom wisdom brings you honor in you to honor to your parents wisdom is a part of your prophetic arsenal the Bible said first Corinthians 12 18 for to one he is given the spirit of the word of wisdom and to another the word of knowledge your prophetic arsenal is comprised of wisdom wisdom makes you a giver it brings you into a place of favor with God Luke 12 42 Exodus 36 1 to uh, eight wisdom wisdom makes you prosperous and it gives you profit in your business Ecclesiastes 7 and 11 wisdom is good with an inheritance but and by it there is a profit to them that see the sun I decree and declare over every business owner that God is injecting wisdom whatever you are facing whatever problem you have to solve whatever product you have to create whatever you have to adjust whatever you have to innovate whatever operation whatever part of the strategy wherever uh, uh, management wherever in administration I decree and declare every aspect of your whiz of your business is in is super Im imbued with wisdom I decree and declare everyone that works with you is wise your managers are wise the entry-level clerks are wise the operations is wise the marketing is wise the sales is wise I decree and declare your you have a board of directors that is made of wise people I decree every aspect of your your business I decree you have nothing but wise people I not only decree that but I decree every vendor that you interact and every vendor that you hire I decree wisdom wisdom gives you the ability to trust to obey 
and to acknowledge God. Romans 16, 19, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good. I decree and declare wisdom is coming to you. Wisdom makes you an industry leader. Exodus 36, 1 to 2. Wisdom makes you shine. I decree and declare your life will no longer lack luster. I decree you are shining as bright as the sun. I decree and declare Ecclesiastes 8 and 1 upon you who is as the wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing, a man's wisdom making his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I decree and declare you are getting your mojo back. You are getting your confidence back. I decree you're standing up with your shoulders squared. I decree and declare you are facing off your competition knowing that you are the best and the brightest in the industry. I decree and declare you are walking in around, hallelujah, the negotiating table and your face is shining and the people that are looking at you cannot say no. They must say yes. The bank must say yes. You are shining bright. You are sticking out. God is making you head and shoulders above everybody. You have stand out qualities and wisdom will give you stand out qualities. Let me give you the last few points. Wisdom has her own PR firm. When you get wisdom, you get your PR firm. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 2 and 9, so I was great and increase more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remaineth with me. In other words, wisdom became my PR specialist. I decree and declare Proverbs 1, 20 to 21 over you. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the street. She crieth out in the chief places of the concord, in the opening of the gates, in the city. She uttereth her words saying, I decree and declare wisdom is now your PR specialist. Do not leave your house without wisdom. My th last few points, opportunities avail themselves to the wise. E Exodus 28 and 3, wisdom again gives you standout quality amongst the crowd. And here is my conclusion. You've got to be able to value your first instruction because if you value your first instruction, here is what she's going to give you. Proverbs 8, 11. Proverbs 8, 11. And we're going to read it out loud. Proverbs 8, 11. Proverbs 8, 11. And we're going to read until we stop. When you get wisdom, you get so many things. A lot of us if we had wisdom when we were 18, we wouldn't have hung out with certain people. If we had wisdom when we were 21, 22, 25, we would not have married certain people. If we had wisdom, we would have paid attention to our elders if we just had wisdom. But from today onward, you're going to go through life you're going to pass every test because you're going to have your first instructor going with you. And that's wisdom. Wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that you may desire are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogance. To hate the evil way in the forehead mouth. Do I hate? Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Seeking her early doesn't mean a time clock. It has to do before you need something. Before things get bad, before the problems come, you, you seek her before you need her. 
Riches and honor are with me. That means you don't have to work for that. It's the natural outcome. It's the proof. Durable riches and righteous. I like not just riches, but durable. It means that it's not going to run out. It's not going to run out in your generation and the next generation and the next generation. Just like the Rockefeller. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenues than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of paths of judgment, and I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. You don't have to fill your treasures. Wisdom will do that for you. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his work of old. That means if God relied on wisdom, the least we can do is to rely on wisdom too. You can read the rest of it because it's very, very powerful. Read it straight through verse number 36. The final thing wisdom says, Proverbs 9 and 1, wisdom had built her house. She has hewn out seven pillars. So the question is, what is the seven pillars of wisdom? You're going to have to wait to part two to get the seven pillars of wisdom. So what lessons do we learn and what lessons does wisdom teach? Number one, wisdom's curriculum is centered around how to be open, how to be open to new experiences, don't be closed-minded, how not to be a know-it-all, how to be open to new opportunities hidden within problems and questions, how to be open to change, how to be open to learn. Wisdom teaches you how to succeed in life without compromising your morals and values. Wisdom shows you how to relate how to relate to God, to relate to others, to relate to yourself, how to relate with your spouse, how to relate with the world, how to relate with re leadership. Wisdom shows you how to advance, how to progress and prosper in life, how to advance financially, relationally, spiritually, professionally. Wisdom teaches you how to gain and manage your fame, your wealth, success, and influence. Then finally, it wisdom teaches you how to keep God at the center of it all and make him your priority. Wisdom brings you into amazing realms of power and influence. Wisdom gives you a name. It shows you your limitations without God. But in an unlimited God, you become unlimited. And so if you're a student, of wisdom, you will become a powerful individual. So tonight, as you bow your head and you pray, ask God to give you wisdom as an instructor and submit to wisdom as your best student. For when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Your first instructor is wisdom. Did you get anything out of this? Yeah. If any man lack wisdom, you don't have wisdom as your instructor. The Bible said all you have to do is ask. Raise your hands. Our Father God, corporately and individually, you have given us instructions. A school called life. You are the one that decides the curriculum. You have chosen a special curriculum for us. It's our life experiences. And as we are experiencing life, I decree and declare that we would not leave home as one who does not understand who we are. We're royal priesthood. We're children of the king. 
were part of the upper class. And as such, there would never be a time that we would go through life without our pedagogy, our instructor. So today, give us wisdom. Wisdom, we embrace you. Said, embrace me as a sister or as someone close and next in kin. And so you are our sister, you are our kin. And as we walk with you, all the things that this curriculum will give, I decree and declare when we take our tests in life, you'll be right there giving us the wisdom to do so. So bless each person. In Jesus' name, amen. Think of the specific areas that you need wisdom in, the specific areas. I want you to select three of them, just three. What does it look like? Where do you need wisdom right now, right now? Is it health? Is it relationship? Is it your job? Where do you need wisdom? Bow your heads and pray and just talk to God for a few minutes. Talk to God, open your mouth, talk to him. Talk to him, talk to him. This is where I am, this is where I am. I messed up before, I'm confused. I don't know whether to stay here or go, I don't know what to do. I've got this opportunity, what to do next? I need to write a book, what should I write? I need to develop a proposal, a contract, how should I write it? You've given me this assignment to lead. You give me an assignment to create, it's never been done before. And I feel the frustration. I feel the frustration of the assignment. I feel the frustration as a mother. I feel the frustration as a father. I feel the frustration as a leader, an industry leader. And I need your wisdom. I'm dealing with this problem in the workplace. Give me wisdom. I'm dealing with this problem. The doctor said, we're fighting in my family. I, I, I need wisdom. What do I do? Do I sell the house? Do I keep it? I'm wrestling financially, God. How shall I solve this financial problem? I refuse to give up. I'm gonna pass this test because I have wisdom to instruct me accordingly. In Jesus' name, lay hands on the person on your left and right. Pray for them. Pray that God would activate the, the wisdom. Just say, I activate it. You're stronger than you think. You're wiser than you think. God is going to give you wisdom as a gift to receive it. And don't engage in any life of fear without it. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together and let's just praise God. <laughs> Salute the person on your left and right. Tell them you're wise, you're wise. You're walking out of here with the wisdom that you need. In Jesus' name. Just take your seat for the next few minutes. And then lastly, one of the things I've learned is the power of the seed. Whenever I stand up to receive your seed, I can only give you an opportunity. Hashtag God without gimmicks. Your seed is a breakthrough vehicle. It puts your blessing, your finances on autopilot. The earth of herself will bring forth. Herself, autos. It means you automate your future blessing and your future success with a seed. I've te taught long enough. I'm not going to open the Bible again. We're going to challenge each one of you to give your best seed, commensurate to you the message that was preached. I bless each one of you. Looking forward to seeing you and seeing you next time we meet together in our life group. God bless you and have a tremendous week in the Lord. Amen.
Wonderful, wonderful. Would you stand to your feet? Let me pray over your seed before you exit out of the room tonight. Would you lift something that represents your finances? Father, we bless now the gift and the giver. We thank you for anointing us as givers. And it's your promise that you would give seed to the sower, which means that we will never run out of that which to give as long as our hands are open. We say right now, our hands are open. Use us as a portal for wealth creation in the earth, Lord, that, that heaven's economy would touch down in the earth realm through us. Bless the business owners. Bless the employees and the employers, God. Bless the entrepreneurs and industry leaders that you would enlarge our financial portfolio. We decree and declare, God, that whatever's in our bank account now will be the least that will ever be there. That from this day forward, we are only increasing. We decree and declare your favor rests upon us, that creativity and ingenuity and efficiency flows freely, that we arise as leaders to affect culture. In Jesus' name, I bless your seed. I declare a multiplication anointing now is released into your household. In Jesus' name. And if you receive that, I want you to say amen and amen. Come on, can you put your hands together one more time? <laughs> 